Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Welcome back to the Shire. We are going to take a, an unboxing look at one of five. Very excited, very happy Christmas for myself in the slot car world anyway. Uh, the first one here we're going to take a look at is uh, the Ninko. This is my first Ninko. Pretty excited about it. I've had this plan in place to do this R18 and try and get it up to speed like my slotted versions of the R18 LMP. Maybe maybe my NSR version. I'm not sure anything can go quite as fast as that car has managed to pull off uh, for Le Mans prototypes. Uh, but needless to say, I've had a plan in place the whole entire time to make this Ninko look more like the livery itself, getting rid of those lightning sport wheels that came with, a, with it back then. Um, Amongst some other things that just bring it class compliant. Uh, so this is, uh, this is the first one that I chose to do after Christmas here. And um, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's see where this one's going out of the box anyway to start with. All right, the first look that we're going to do here out of the Christmas stash will be a project car. Not so much a project, it'll go through, I would say, a regular tune, but the goal of the exercise is to get it to run as good as this slot it or as this NSR. Now, maybe it's asking a lot to have any car perform like this NSR, as it's very unlikely that you're going to get the performance benefits combined with the look of the car. But uh, you never know. You never know. This Le Mans winner here from Slot It in 2013. So let's. Um, Let's move away from the NSR and slot it conversation and let's talk about this Ninko right here. This Ninko is what they consider their lightning pro race version cars. Um, you know, the history of Ninko is there. Um, somebody else could obviously comment and let me know. Um, there's classics. They've gone in the route of some GT cars and some Le Mans prototype cars, but I believe Ninko has gotten into RC racing. Uh, but these cars served a purpose, and, you know, at the time, no one had done this livery. So let's talk a little bit about it. Again, this is the Ninko Sport Pro Race version, and we're going to turn this into a bit of a project car. So this is number 5060, and again, you see the Lightning Pro Race moniker that they've given you for this car. Um, it's a bit of a big footprint from Ninko. It's actually the first Ninko car that I've ever bought but there's a method to the madness here. Um, so I have the 2013 winner. This car, while not advertised as such, is the 2012 Le Mans winning car. I don't know, Ninko obviously paid Audi to be able to create this livery. And like many a manufacturer, they cut corners here or there, or they do just enough to not have to pay the full price. And we'll go through some of those things. Um, clearly, the pro race wheels that they put on it is going to be part of the project. That is not acceptable to me. But again, the car was achievable. Electric Dreams, thank you. Some of the things are priced well to move in Electric Dreams. Some things not so much. It's a different conversation for a different day. But the point being is I did enough research on this particular livery to know that this 5060 for all intent and purposes is the 2012 Le Mans winning livery, including the drivers that are listed on the door and everything about the livery except for a few things uh, that are done with this car. So let's, let's take it out and see what we can do. Review. Start by getting rid of that little piece right there, I suppose. A half a turn, or maybe it's a full screw. I don't know. Maybe I got too far. I think it's just a huh? nope. But it actually is a full. Is a full. Yeah, for those interested, the Ninkos are full screw in there, not a half turn like a slot it or something like that. So, um, you know, again, a decent case. It's certainly going to hold it. It's a bigger footprint, a much bigger footprint than any any ones we're you know familiar with typically from fly to. Slot it into other things. I'm still right there, Dave, from Slot R. Too much plastic. We're already going to, you know, have to build things with plastic. Definitely echo his sentiment that maybe the boxing could be a little bit different. So let's take a look at this car out of the box. It's beautiful. 
There's no question about how beautiful this car is. I just, there's something about a Le Mans prototype and there's something about the Audi R18 that just drives me to this car, the 2011, 12, and 13 Le Mans winning cars and the other cars that participated, including like NSR with the yellow detail that um, actually wrecked. So out of the gate, I'll point out some of the things that are going on here. Um, I don't know that they tinted the front of the windshield that significantly. Uh, it's comparable to the slotted livery uh, as far as um, maybe not so much that I don't have this one, but in terms of the year before, clearly slotted has made this car in a Le Mans winning livery. It's my understanding, looking up some of the history, that Ninko made it first. We all know that the field is flooded with R18s from slotted to NSR to these Ninko. I think Ninko has about two or three of these variants out there. Um, what is accurate? Well, the car is accurate. The driver's names on the side that won the race are accurate. Very much so. If you put these two cars side by side, there's not a lot you'll find other than the fact that this is the following year's car. So there are slight differences, obviously, in certain aspects of it. What isn't accurate? Well, this thin part of the rear spoiler on the real car actually has Bosch lowered on it and it's angled like an airplane rudder right there. Um, another thing that is different here that was not done, again, this is where I think that they take liberties and may cut corners. The entire mirror on both sides, including the upright piece is all in red. I will be actually fixing that. I'm gonna try and make this car as livery specific as I can. There's no reason that I can't paint that whatever candy apple red that looks like and put a little clear coat on top of it. And then another thing where some liberties are taken, and again, I'm not really 100% sure I understand why, um, but there must be some sort of monetary savings to make it slightly different all the way down to the fact that this car was not called out by Ninko or by, in the case of Electric Dream, selling it, that it was the Le Mans winning car. The Le Mans winning car, all of the sponsorship and items are either on the car in close to the right place or they're identical to where you would find certain things on the car. What's not 100% accurate is the fact that it says Castrol Edge right here. Yes, this car and many of the Audis and Porsches and cars back in the day and probably as a sponsor to uh, you know, WEC Racing put Castrol Edge in their cars. Again, that's a motor preference circumstance, obviously based on whatever lubricant they were choosing. But I can tell you with absolute certainty, uh, as I have it pulled up on the screen that is just off of your screen that you're viewing, there's no Castrol Edge logo on this livery for the Le Mans winning one. But everything else is as it should be, right down to the 24-hour logo over the top of the number one. And so it is a beautiful car. Um, I compare this to, in terms of chassis, in terms of manufacturer and components, right around a slotted, an NSR. Let's get underneath the car. It has their sport guide. It's still a snap-in guide. That will be replaced. It has a fairly sturdy chassis underneath here. Um, we've got a nice motor pod. Reminds me of an NSR motor pod. Um, there are some fins inside of here that we'll get into that hang over, but you'll be able to create some motor pod float. Clearly, we'll be able to create some body float, obviously. Two body screws, one under there, one right there. Uh, and, you know, you can see they held true to the way the underside of the diffuser sets in on both parts of the car. It's very familiar, maybe not exactly the same way. Slotted has done it, but it's very familiar Wheelbase to wheelbase, again, these are different model year cars, so we really can't compare that. This is a 2013, uh, this is the 2012, uh, but you know they're very close in terms of how that goes. Guide to rear axle is almost identical, I would say. And yes, I made this car an angle winder. This car comes inherently as in line, and it comes 924. 
So to be honest, 924 is you know one of the places, 267 is one of the places where I love to live. So the base of this car, the chassis, everything involved in it, set screw front axle adjustment, yes, happy to see that. And sure, these wheels serve a purpose from a perspective of performance, but they don't match for me. So that's one of the other things. Now I can't take off the Castrol Edge logo. I suppose I could if I really was a stickler for it, but then I'd probably mess around with the entire Tampo. Um, could I possibly carefully make these fins on the edge of the spoiler look more accurate where they look like an airplane rudder? Yes, and might I? Absolutely, I have the confidence to do that. It's your own personal preference. Do you need to do any of those things? No. Uh, but I am going to paint the mirrors because that's just too easy to tape that off, paint the mirrors, and put some clear coat on it. I just want it accurate. And then as you'll notice, the major upgrade to this car, two major, major upgrades. Number one, class compliance for Le Mans prototype is either a Piranha or, in the case of what I prefer, is to put an MX-16, 23,000 RPMs, 170 grams per centimeter of torque at 12 volts, I don't know what it is, uh, superstition. Like many of us that are uh, into racing or sports or other things, whenever I seem to do Le Mans prototype cars or GT high performance cars, I seem to put a slotted MX-16 in there. I don't know, my DTM cars, then for some reason I go run and get a Piranha. <laughs> and they're virtually the same motor uh, on purpose while you can put those two classes, uh, while you can put those motors in that class and pair up either way that you want to do the car. But what the real major change is here is we're going to be putting the NSR wheels on here and the wheel inserts. So the nice thing is, is that with what Ninko put together, it's a one-to-one -one relationship in terms of the fact that these are 17s, these are 17s, uh, these are by 8s, I believe these are by 10s, if not the tires are a little bit wider, so they might not be receiving um, CB58s like an NSR GT or the NSR Audi R18, uh, but they'll receive quick slick CB34s instead. And I will get some NSR 5202s or 5224s, forgive me, or 5226s, forgive me, I can't remember. We'll get to that point when we, when we do the tune. But overall, the opportunity is there to both make this car a high performer, and make it a little bit more livery specific to how this car was running at the 24 hours of Le Mans. So let's open up. Okay, so the first thing I would show you here is that these are screws that are typical to a Skelectric car. Ninko has clearly been using them as well. I'll see if I can get a look at them. They're obviously magnetic. I would recommend replacing those screws with an NSR screw that has a flat shoulder or a slotted screw that has a flat shoulder. They're brass typically, um, and that'll help you out. And we'll get into a flat shoulder need possibly, and I'll give you a link to a nice blogger post that was done, I believe in the year this car came out in uh, 2000, maybe it was 13 or 14, or maybe it even was the year of 12. So inside we have a very nice surface that is amenable to large amounts of weight. Listen, that's nice that they give you some wire management opportunities here for the guide to be able to be responsive in a way that it needs to be. You can do other things with that. There's certainly other ways to get the guide wires into this car. If you were deciding to take a Dremel and completely flatten that out because you wanted a large chunk of weight here, say somewhere, who knows what we'll determine between you know, maybe three and five grams. There's opportunities for weight along the sides if needed as well. The crusher, the Ninko crusher, long can motor, that will disappear. It's a pretty nice motor from my understanding though. Gets the job done. It is interesting that that motor comes in here in the long can variety. Um, for whatever reasons, their torque, whatever they decided with the RPM out of the box, not what we're gonna use. Um, so we'll remove that and we have a nice CG uh, motor adapter that'll go on the end that will allow the short can motor to come in here. Um, 924, we'll take a look at these gears. I'll probably put a brand new slot at nine on there. Maybe we'll leave the 24 and see the kind of gear mesh that we get. Uh, adjustable front axle, yes to that all day long. 
we'll remove this and we'll put in a slotting plus 101001 guide that will be our 22 millimeter length and the wood depth somewhere between I think it's a seven or eight millimeter depth guide exactly what we love to use on this track and then we'll get into evaluating this uh, this built-in suspension you know it's similar to the NSR cups underneath although the chassis is built in here the chassis is built in with the actual cup right built into the chassis and then you've got your spring and you've got your screw there were reports from the blogger that uh, from the blog post that was suggested when they ran through the entire car setup that the sides of the springs or the sides of the springs the sides of the screws caught on the springs okay well then let's go shoulderless here i'm going to take advantage of this this will be my first opportunity to use real suspension in uh, a slot car other than using chassis and uh, motor pod pardon me body float and motor pod float uh, so you know i'm sure it's relatively simple by backing off these screws a little bit and then you can oh, i already just felt it yep i already started to feel it loosen up and then you have that pivot from those springs so a magnet here right in front of that crusher we'll see if we're going to keep that see what kind of weight that does again at hobbit racing park on the war eagle river track there is no need for a magnet there is no magnet traction uh, but otherwise a very nice setup again reminds me of the rear end of an nsr car i don't think we have uh, the oil light type of bushing in here um, where you can maybe self lubricate as they say once you put some oil in there but needless to say, it looks like a good set of bushings, very smooth action here from the initial gear mesh evaluation. So, um, you know, I'd say these tires are in decent shape. Again, these are very, very slick, so they're intended to be zero grip tires. And I don't know what the shore is on this from a rubber standpoint, uh, but we won't be using them anyway. We'll be going with quick slicks, probably CB34s, depending on uh, maybe CB, uh, maybe, maybe CB58s, depending on what fits on the wheels that I bought that I believe were a stock match to the um, inline NSR Audi R18. And I believe this is a simple match too, where there's a 17 by 10. So this is a clean slate for me to be able to just make some easy, easy modifications that are typically routine to me, putting zero grips on here, putting quick slicks on here, changing out the guide, changing out the motor to be class compliant for how we race it, combined with However, I've managed to set the weight up. And the nice thing is, again, being able to change these out and putting the matching spokes that go inside as the inserts to the NSR wheels. So that was a little introduction to this car. I think it's a great opportunity. I think this car is a very good runner. Watched enough of the video and I watched a presentation of enough of this to know that this is going to be a good handling car. The chassis is in good shape. It is definitely a harder chassis compared to say a slotted chassis it feels like but it is not as or as comparable to a slotted chassis pardon me and not as soft as an NSR chassis that is much more flexible out of the box and the black chassis that come with most NSR cars. So I look forward to seeing how this can be set up and that is step number two but that is an introduction to this Ninko number 5060 2012 audi r18 and what is the le mans winning livery from that year so thanks for watching and um stay tuned for the tune on this car so there you have the initial review out of the enormous box out of the large jewel case that ninko provides uh but uh you know I'll find something else to keep it in if that doesn't work out for storage purposes. Uh, but that's one of five. And so um, lots of tuning coming up, lots of fun cars to do. We'll go over some of the other ones that I got. Maybe I'll do a, a quick video and show all five of the cars that I did get for Christmas. But let's, uh, let's start with this one from a tuning perspective. So um, again, if you like this kind of content, give us a like, share it, give me some comments, and subscribe. Until then. See you next time from Hobbit Racing. If you don't subscribe to Hobbit Racing, I'll poke you with my staff. Pokey, pokey, pokey. She will poke you with her staff. Po